Let's assume that we have two investments, A and B. The expected return for investment A is 10%. The expected return for investment B is 12%. The risk of investment A is 8%. The risk of investment B is 8%, which means we have the same risk. Therefore, which investment would you choose, A or B? So, our rule is, if we have the same level of risk, it's better to choose the highest or the lowest return, the highest return. Therefore, we're going to choose investment B. Let's get another example. Let's assume we have two investments, A and B. The expected return for investment A is 10%. The expected return for investment B is 10%, which means we have the same return. The risk for investment A is 6%. The risk for investment B is 8%. So in this example, we have the same return. So if we have the same return, which investment shall we choose? The highest risk or the lowest risk? Definitely, we will go with the lowest risk. Therefore, the investment we're going to choose is investment A. Let's get another example. Let's assume that we have two investments, A and B. The expected return for investment A is 10%. For B is 20%. The risk of A is 6%. The risk for investment B is 14%. Therefore, all the time we choose the highest return. So what's the highest return? 20% is bigger than 10%, so we choose B. But at the same time, we choose the lowest risk. So 6% is lower than 14%, so we choose A. Therefore, here we have contradicting choices. Shall we choose A, a because it has the lowest risk, or shall we choose B because it has the highest return? So usually, we cannot choose in this example, which means in order to be able to choose, we must have the same risk or the same return. But if risk and return are different, we cannot make a choice directly. Therefore, what shall we do? We need to calculate something called coefficient of variation. So what do we mean by coefficient of variation or CV? We need to get risk divided by return. So this means that when we divide risk by return, we will get the relative risk to return, which means we will unify the return to be one, and then we will choose the lowest risk. So let's calculate the coefficient of variation for investment A. What's our risk? 6. Put it without percentage. So 6 divided by 10. This will give us 0.6. What will be the coefficient of variation for investment B? Risk of 14 divided by return of 20. So this will give us 0.7. So we can redraw our table again. We have investment A and investment B. Our return and risk. So we know that the coefficient of variation for investment A is 0.6. So what do you mean by 0.6? It's as if 0.6 divided by 1. Remember the formula, risk divided by return. So this means that the risk is 0.6 and the return is 1. Do the same with the coefficient of variation of B. It's 0.7 divided by 1 equal to 0.7. So this means that our risk is 0.7, our return is 1. Therefore, now we have the same return. If we have the same return, we'll choose the highest risk or the lowest risk. We'll choose the lowest risk which is investment A. Therefore, by using coefficient of variation, we convert our return and risk to be relative risk and relative return. Consequently, with coefficient of variation, all the time, the higher the better or the lower the better? The lower the better, because it means that we have a lower risk. So here, the lower the better. Let's get exactly the same example, investment A and B. We have the return is 10% for A, 20% for B. The risk is 6% for A and 14% for B. In the previous example here, we unified return to be one. Can we do the opposite and unify risk to be one? Yes, we can. So which formula shall we use? It's called Sharpe ratio. So what will be our Sharpe ratio? Our SR equal our return minus risk free. So why do we subtract risk-free? From its name, what do we mean by risk-free? Theoretically, it doesn't have risk. So this means that if I would like to take extra return, I would like to be compensated by additional return. And that's why our excess return or additional return is our return minus risk-free divided by our risk. So let's assume that in this example, the risk-free rate is 1%. So our sharp ratio for investment A will be Put all the numbers without percentage. So we have a return of 10 minus risk-free rate of 1 divided by risk of 6. This will give us 1.5. What about the sharp ratio for B? We have a return of 20 minus risk-free rate of 1 divided by risk of 14. So this will give us 
1.36. So now let's draw our table again. We have investment A and B and we have the return and we have the risk. Let's look at the sharp ratio for investment A. It is 1.5 divided by 1 equal 1.5. So this means that our excess return is 1.5 and our risk is 1. Let's do the same for investment B. It's 1.36 divided by 1 equal to 1.36, which means our excess return is 1.36 divided by our risk of 1. Therefore, we converted our actual figures here based on expected return and risk into relative figures, which means I made risk as one unit and I got the relative excess return. Therefore, we have the same risk here. We'll choose the highest relative return or the lowest, we will choose the highest. Therefore, we will choose investment A. And as you look here, either we use coefficient of variation or we use sharp ratio, we will get the same decision, which is investment in investment A. Therefore, with coefficient of variation, all the times the lower the better, while with sharp ratio, the higher the better.